ask the Horse Collective if there's anything else that humans need to understand before we close our conversation. And can we talk to you again? You can speak to the Horse Collective at any moment that you wish. You can call upon it for yourselves as you stand alongside your own horses or draw upon the horse energy that is always connected to you. You can call upon the collective of the horse energy to be present and bring forth as much knowledge as you wish to seek. As far as the message for humanity is to understand this. Allowing yourself to merge at any point in your own existence with that of a horse, whether it is yours or not, this will begin an unlocking. It will begin a point of humbling yourself before the majesty and the power of that great animal. And it is that that will carry you through. It is that alignment that will strengthen you because it will always from that point forward be present with you. At this time, I'd like to call in the Greater Horse Collective to chat with us and answer a few questions. The Horse Collective is present. Thank you so very much for your presence today. I'm curious, can you share how horses support humanity? What is your role with the humans? It is understanding the presence that a horse provides to that of one single human or as many as that wish to gather around. It's the presence of an animal of that size alongside a human, for it is the only, it is the only animal that is of that caliber, that size, that bonds in the way it does to humans. There are much larger animals upon the planet, but not that you have relationships with them. So it is understanding from the human's perspective, the relationship, not only intelligence, but size. It is to give a perspective of your own your own existence, that having a animal of that size next to you gives you perspective of your own existence. So it is understanding the intelligence of the horse. It is understanding the size and caliber of the horse. And it is understanding how you are in presence with that. When you understand from a human perspective that you may feel as if you are the largest creature upon the planet, the most intelligent upon the planet, and then you're introduced to a horse, it puts that all into perspective for your own existence, understanding that you are humbled by the size, you are humbled by the intelligence. So it is to understand this 
even to the point of the horse collective. For when you align yourself with a horse, whether it is yours or someone else's, you may not own your own horse, but it may be someone else's. And you are in its presence. You are aligning to that of the collective, of all horse energy, all horse knowledge. See, the threading that takes place between all horses is one that is, mm, one would understand it, that there isn't a boundary between each horse existence. They are all intertwined. So it may be that you, you are aligned with one particular type of horse, but that horse itself feels as if it is much more majestic, much bigger, has a different role. And that is because that is what it carries into this existence. It crosses those barriers of time and understanding. It crosses those barriers of multiple lives. It crosses into all existence for all of horses. From the very first horse that was mm, created to the horses that exist now, you are enveloped in their energy, their intelligence, their essence. So from a human's perspective, it is to stand in awe. It is to stand in the presence of and allow yourself to be washed over with the beauty, the love that is present. And when you do, you'll feel yourself being drawn in, not just into that particular horse, but into an existence that does transcend time. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. <clears throat> I understand that horses retain information from past lives in a different way than other animals. Why is that and how does that work? For it is just as it has been explained, it is this Hmm. It is this transcendence of time that is left open. Whether that, hmm, whether that animal has lived one life or a thousand lives, even within that one life, you are still bringing in the memories of many other past lives from other horses that have been in existence. So it is the accumulation of all of that. But for one particular horse that has lived multiple lives, they store all of that in themselves. They bring that from lifetime to lifetime. They leave open those understandings. And for why it is to understand that, it is to understand how you can learn all of that history. See, many that own horses, they believe they are dealing with just that particular life. This is how this horse is meant to be. This is the type of horse. This is what it is bred to do. But when you understand that that horse can teach you quicker than you are to teach it. Teach you of all the lives, teach you of all the experiences, teach you how to then in turn teach it how to operate in this lifetime. When you understand what has taken place in those lives that have been lived, then you have an understanding of how to teach it in this lifetime, because it is a new lifetime. It is learning just as you are learning. But it is easier to teach when you understand the fundamentals of how far back those lives go. So they leave those doors open. And so that is the main reason of why. It is to assist you in teaching. It is to understand there is much more than just what you see in front of you. So whatever personality or traits one animal may have, it isn't because of just this lifetime. 
it is to take into account all of what has been experienced throughout all of the lifetimes. Now, you may not see them all, but it is to begin to understand from a compassionate place that you are dealing with multiple aspects, multiple lives that are trying to show you in this existence where they've come from. And so whether they are stubborn, whether they are quite wise, whether they are resistant, whether they are challenging, hardworking, lovable, this is all expressions of accumulation, not just from one life, but from all. And when you understand how to read that, that is you learning, then you can then teach in a much more effective way. Ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that. And you mentioned the word compassion. There are a lot of humans on the planet now who wish to have the most ethical and compassionate relationship with horses in particular. And so there's a bit of debate about how much work is appropriate for a horse. For example, should we allow them to pull carriages through town? Should we allow them to do manual labor on farms, for example? Can you speak to us about that and how we can best understand that? For it is to understand it in this manner. <clears throat> Each horse, think of it as it is specifically designed for a specific task. Some are quite slender and quite muscular. They may be used for racing, may be used for those activities that require agility. There are those that are built much more robust. They are there for working. They are there to carry the heavy loads. And so it isn't to understand, are you mistreating, misaligning the horse? But it is coming from a point of compassion of understanding the horse's build. Is it appropriate for what it is being used for? And once you understand that, then it is up to the handlers. You see, it isn't up to the horse at that point. The horse has already agreed to take on the task. But then it is up for the handlers, those that are always around them, the caretakers. Are they in alignment with the understanding of the animal? This is where the teaching needs to begin. It is changing the understanding of how to appropriately align compassionately with the animal. Yes, there is much work that is done with many animals. But if you do not, if you do not see them as a, how shall it be said, as a useful aid in what you are trying to accomplish. If you're looking at it more as this animal is purely here to do this work, so this is how I'm going to treat it, then the results that you are going to receive are going to be likewise. But when you align yourself compassionately, educating yourself and understanding there are multiple aspects to this animal than just this life that it is in now, then you address how to ethically work with that animal, to allow it to provide the most beneficial result to what you are trying to do. See, it is a relationship. Many say they have relationships with the animals, but it is at a surface aspect. They do not understand the animal from the depth of what its existence is. So this is where the teaching needs to be. So it is to understand if there is one that is pulling a cart, pulling a plow, running for a race, they are all designed for a specific task. They are willing to take on the task 
they will take on the task regardless of the handler. But as you expressed, it is this understanding of ethically building a relationship, compassionately building a relationship, understanding the animal for more than just being an animal that is presented before you. Beautiful. Thank you for that understanding. <clears throat> what lesson can humans learn from the Horse Collective relative to how you interact with each other and with other animals on the planet? The greatest lesson is the lesson in observation. If it is to sit and observe wild horses, or if it is to sit and observe your own horses without them, without having a conversation, without having any interaction with them, just from a distance. And setting aside any, setting aside any teachings or any knowledge that you currently have, and just observe what you'll begin to see and what you'll begin to understand is a bit of a, and you understand it, many humans understand it as a natural dynamic. But it is when you begin to read into this natural dynamic is when you begin to understand how horses themselves, whether it is horse to horse or any other animal, there is a first and foremost there is an underlying understanding of respect to one another there may be challenges between each other but at the fundamental level there is respect for all other animals so it is to observe and understand the minute reactions those body movements that are so small that you would miss them these are the indicators of how you and this is to understand this is a reflection of how you as a human are to interact with other humans when you can observe animals in the wild or any other animals you begin to see exactly that fundamental respect for one another and this understanding of how to address others appropriately just by small body gestures. That is the first level of communication. That is the first layer of understanding. And then from there you begin to understand and you begin to see very clearly every body movement is a word, is a sentence, is a understanding. So it is to, if you wish to think of it as forgetting everything you've learned to this point and relearn by observation, this will give you greater insight, not only for your relationship with animals, but your relationship for human to human understanding. Perfect, awesome. How similar is the horse collective to the donkey or the mule collective or <clears throat> other similar animals? Well, for, you can think of it this way, whether it's horse or donkey or mule, it is quite similar at its, at its beginning stages. There is a bit of, if you were to call in the donkey collective or the mule collective, you'll see that from the horse collective, as you are witnessing now, there is this presence that is at times can be just as many horses, a bit overwhelming, a bit uh, with a bit of posturing, status, with understanding, with the donkeys or the mules, you'll see that there is a bit of playfulness, a bit of mm, 
childlike energy that is involved. But all in all, the information will be quite similar. It'll just be brought forward in a much different manner because it is all at the very basic level. We all have the same connectedness to our past. We bring forward all of those memories. This is why when you observe a donkey or a mule, many times you see them and observe them in a very contemplative way. They are just staring through the pasture. They're just contemplating all of their understanding. Similar to horses, they too will have that very pronounced gaze. It isn't that they're not looking at any one particular thing. They are contemplating much of this existence as well as all what they've lived to understand how to utilize it much better in this lifetime. Ah, oh, thank you for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. The past six or eight months ago, we, Will and I were informed that we would have horse energy entering our field and working with us. Is there any light you can shed on that? What was the purpose of that or how was that to help us? For it has been a much, much longer period of time. You've been introduced to the horse energy. At that moment that you have been witness to the, the ponies that you are now so acquainted with. Oh, yes. And it was that that began to open the door for that energy. It is to understand this path that has been taken. It's not one that you have chosen. It is one that you have been chosen to be on. The horse energy has drawn you into it, even to the point at which you are located near those that are quite familiar with horses. It is this understanding that the presence of horse energy, once introduced, it is not something that can be set aside. So it is allowing yourself to be continued to be infused by it. It will begin to open many other mm, recesses of understanding. Again, it is to understand this mm, essence of the horse energy and how it can expand your, your knowledge, expand your understanding of how to interact with all animals and all humans. They are the greatest teachers for this action. Yes, and we are honored to be in communion with that horse energy. Thank you for that explanation. I'd like to ask Candace if she has any other questions before we conclude. Oh my gosh, um, for the horse collective, yes, actually. The one thing that I have said my entire life about the people who connect with horses in the strongest way or who want to connect with horses in the strongest way, that, that people are born that way. Um, we joke about it, but, but I actually think there might be something in the human DNA in particular individuals that, um, predispose them to longing for connections and interaction with horses. Horses, a number of horse memories are some of the first memories I've ever had in my, in my, my life. And, and they were, they came from a very, very young age and I was absolutely obsessed with horses. And I know other people who feel the same way. And many of us, most of us tend to be women actually, uh, and we feel that we were born that way. Can you speak to that? For this yearning and this connection, you bring forward an understanding that it is within the DNA for at a very basic level. Yes, it is in the DNA, but this is a, it shall be understood as a, a memory point, an imprinting in the DNA that has taken place throughout many different lifetimes, that you have been there 
alongside your horses. So it isn't that it is just a memory that um, comes upon you of a past life. You have chosen a life path from the very first moments of your existence, the very first moments of your first creation. You've created a life path, subsequent lives that have all been connected to that horse collective energy. Whether you've had the horses or not, it is there in your strands of DNA. It is imprinted into it. It is that that you carry forward and will continue to carry forward. Yes, it is quite true. Those that once they, once they unlock the power of the horse energy, whether that is of that, even as a, shall it be understood as a spirit animal for you, you are unlocking that portion. You're releasing that portion of your DNA into your existence. And it will never from that point forward leave you. It is the power and the majesty of the horse energy that resides with you and will always and continue to teach you all throughout all existences. Wow, fantastic. Thank you. Anything else, Candace? I, I think that's a fantastic way to end it. Uh, well, I do have a question for you, Allison. Is this the first time you've talked with the Horse Collective? It is the first time that I've spoken to the Horse Collective. And when we wrote um, Love Notes from the Animal Kingdom, we talked to a variety of collectives, as you know, um, but we didn't have the opportunity to do the horses. So this has been fantastic. Um, I will ask the Horse Collective if there's anything else that humans need to understand before we close our conversation. And can we talk to you again? You can speak to the Horse Collective at any moment that you wish. You can call upon it for yourselves. As you stand alongside your own horses or draw upon the horse energy that is always connected to you, you can call upon the collective of the horse energy to be present and bring forth as much knowledge as you wish to seek. As far as the message for humanity is to understand this. Allowing yourself to merge at any point in your own existence with that of a horse, whether it is yours or not, this will begin an unlocking. It will begin a point of humbling yourself before the majesty and the power of that great animal. And it is that that will carry you through. It is that alignment that will strengthen you because it will always from that point forward be present with you. So it is to allow that horse energy to be present in your own lifetime so that it can carry you into an understanding of how to be in a place of compassionate understanding for all animals and all humans. Outstanding. Thank you so very much for your presence with us today. Mm, thank you. <coughs> Welcome back. Mm. <coughs> Hello. Oh. Welcome back, <laughs> Will. You know, wow, the the horse collective there was such there was such a regal presence about it. It was uh, well, I need to have Allison respond because you've talked to other collectives and so many other animals. What did you think of that energy? Well, they used the word majestic several times, and, and I thought it was interesting because, no, they're not the largest animal on planet Earth. However, like they said, they're the largest animal that is in such close relationship with humans and how much we can learn from them because of that. Um, so it, you could sense that power again. I mean, we talked to the collective, whereas normally we talk to one horse and they're powerful on their own. So to talk to the whole collective of them uh, with the, you could just feel the power emanating. Hopefully the viewers could as well. Is that power still reverberating in you, Will? I mean, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like, just hold myself together here. Cause it is, it's, um, when you, so this, this brings me back to when we did the, the, the pet book and we, and Allison would bring in certain pet collectives 
you know, you bring in like the, I think you brought in the whale, we brought in the whale collective, the dolphin collective. I mean, those are some big animals. Elephants. Elephants. And the, but when they settle in, it's just a presence. You know, it's it's there. It's I'm connected to it. It's it's present. This was, I mean, as Allison was describing, but for myself, the energy was so expansive. We'll mm-hmm. put it that way. Mm-hmm. When it settled in, it didn't just kind of. Most times, I'll connect to a higher self. I'll connect connect to one particular animal, and it'll just it'll fill me. Right? It'll be like a balloon expanse. This was well beyond that. And it just, it felt like it just took over the room when it, when it finally settled in. So that's why I'm sitting here trying, my whole body is just kind of like tingling and it's all just kind of pushing out through my feet right now. So it's going to take a minute. So. And that's what was so interesting <coughs> and why I asked, because I had another horse tell me that when they have past life after past life, that information accumulates in a different way than like a dog or a cat. And so the way the horse collective just described it, every single horse has the whole horse collective with yes. it. And yeah. so that is what gives them such power, such wisdom, uh, this, this feeling that you have when you're around them uh, and that a- other animals sense. And Harris, in his channeling that you had done previously, mentioned the same sort of emanation in 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 some different words but right right but that was that was just astonishing it was so um it was such a would would will would it be correct to say it, it not only was it expansive but i, I as you were saying expansive in doing this I, i'm thinking intertwined with humans something about their energy just seems so yeah i mean <laughs> you know yeah i I would, I would say with as many, you know, higher selves that we've channeled thus far, um, there's, there's a few that stick out, right. That, that feel that, that they feel just as expansive. So I would say, yes, there is that, I'll say that blending or that, that bleed over between some higher selves that are extremely expansive and the horse collective. It, they, they, it, there's just, a very similar feel to that. So it's, and I, so I say that to say that I'm feeling that expansiveness, but that isn't of just the horse collective. That's going much farther and much, or, or, or much broader out to the all, right? The source, it's, it's enveloping all of that and pulling that in. That's a good word. Enveloping is another good yeah. word that I was feeling as you were yeah. speaking just just fantastic and i'm really glad this question just popped up because we live in charleston south carolina and the carriage rides are a big deal downtown and a lot of animal rights groups are very much against it and there's always this pushback and uh you know from the animal point of view that i take i was kind of torn as well because i've heard so many animals, including dogs, that like to do work. They like to be busy. They like to have a job. They like to learn. Um, And if you have a draft horse, that's what they're built for. And that's what the collective said. And so it isn't a matter of, can the draft horse not pull a carriage and should they not? It's about your relationship as the caretaker for that animal. And how are you approaching that animal in a compassionate, ethical way? So it isn't mutually exclusive. It isn't that to be compassionate and ethical, animals should not do any kind of labor. It isn't like that. So I'm really glad that they clarified that for us, because those of us who are heart centered and animal centered want to do the best thing for these animals. Interesting. Well, I, I just so enjoyed the feeling of that that energy, <laughs> and it was and it, again, it was so different than 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 the other uh, than singular. the individuals. Yes, it was mm. it was so much different. It really is, and that's the way it was when we would channel. That's why in the pet book that we did, we had um, in the middle section were transcripts with individual animals, but then at the end were transcripts with collectives and the difference between talking to an individual 
squirrel, for example, or talking to the whole collective, um, it, it is- Did you really do that? Did you talk to an individual squirrel? Yes, we have a good friend that actually raised- Had a pet squirrel. Had a pet squirrel. I just want to hear you say this, though. I want to hear you say squirrel <laughs> collective. Just say those two words together. <laughs> Go for it, honey. The squirrel collective, right? Yep. I mean, come on. We talked to the bee and the wasp collective, oh, too. Oh, well, that's right? personal now. Right? That's, so. that's a very personal memory, but that's amazing. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. It's fun. Yeah. The collective energies, though, are so much different. They're so much more, like you said, expansive and powerful <laughs> and wise. Yeah, there's. I think that's the best way to describe it. If you had to you know, if for those that might not be overly energy sensitive, it's the wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's that collective wisdom across the whole spectrum of one collective, you know, whether it's bees or horses or rats. You well, know. and you kind of you kind of channel the human collective or do you not think of it as that? Uh, that I, you know, when I when my team, the collective comes in, um, yeah, I wouldn't say that's necessarily the human collective, the human. Maybe that's a channeling to do. I have to give that some thought. <laughs> how we would even call in what? What is that called? Even well, that's almost that, scary. Almost scary. That might be that that unified <laughs> field of consciousness thing, right? The unified field that we're all creating. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, so I wasn't expecting to be able to ask the horse collective any questions. I'm glad you did, though, because you wanted to talk to the horse collective. So I, I make did. Sure. I did. I did. Um, I somehow I thought there would be like you guys would just talk and I would listen. But no, thank you for that. But if we were to ever do this again, <clears throat> I have some questions about um, if, through his like some of the different um, ancient horse uh, breeds and and the first like deciding to like with the dogs i imagine and even with the cats there was um or at least a possibility if you didn't already do that um you know talking about their the, the beginnings of the interactions with right with, no we should do some research for this channel yes. for this and in a future episode we could do yes. some research about all of that yeah yes and and then i've got this question too i this more general question for the two of you though is so there's um, you know, there, there are creatures or I suppose even people, but that are more group centered as, you know, so I belong to a lot of horse groups online. Um, <laughs> a lot of them are very practically oriented and I can't tell you, I read it even this morning, a, a post from somebody who was like, well, I want to get a horse, but I have a barn. I just have one stall. And how would that horse be by himself? And I mean, like, you know. There'd be so many people going, oh, please, just, do, I mean, don't do that. And now there are absolutely stories and cases where single horses, solitary horses are just fine, especially if they've got a companion like a goat or a donkey. Uh, goats, actually, goats and horses get along really great. Um, my first quarter horse uh, <laughs> lived out her years and she didn't give a shit much, sorry, <laughs> Sorry, it's my show, though. I get to say it, right? She didn't yeah. give a big ball of manure about um, about other horses near as much as she just loved her goat. I mean, she want she preferred her goat Aww. to other horses. But but um, that that sort of energy or or coming into or onto the planet, knowing that you will always be typically part of a herd or a group, mm -hmm. versus the more some of the more solitary creatures um i think that's but, pretty interesting huh but you know in talking to that squirrel that was one of the things we wanted to ask was ethically how do you feel as a squirrel being in a home confined in a home mm -hmm. versus being out in the wild <clears throat> with like squirrels uh -huh. and um and so I, I don't think it's a blanket statement or a generalized thing that we can say a horse may not ever want to come in like you said and be sure alone because the contracts that we sign with those animals are purposeful and we don't know what that purpose is but the squirrel said that there are instances he said i don't mind being inside i've been a squirrel outside very often and i don't mind because we are bonding in a way that does generalize out into the greater human animal 
relationship perspective. And so what we do reverberates out there and improves the relationship between all animals and all humans because of our interaction, this close interaction. So it's amazing, really. So throw it back to Warwick Schiller. He talks a lot about um, horses that when they go out, they need you to be the herd leader. Um, and so that's a horse that's alone that is, you know, um, needing or feeling a need for an, another horse. And actually, you know, that's that's what I had done with um, Hickory Um and and lots of horses and and, and Harris and and um, I never had to do it with Rio, uh, but some horses when you when you take them out and they start to think they 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 start to not want to be there alone, and this is another thing that I w- I would do that nobody else would do. They would say no, you should make your horse. I'm like, here's what I do. I get off, and I'm the leader, and then man, they settle down back there. If you just mm-hmm. start. You know, rather than moving into this territory and you're just taking them, then you become the you know the the automatic leader. And and it's so weird how humans, especially you know some who are really their heels are dug in on types of riding and things you do and things you don't do. And and there's plenty of especially some Western traditions that would just tell you. Well, you don't let your horse do that to you. You show them who's boss, right? And I'm like, oh, damn. You know, I want to be a partner with my horse. Right, right. right. Yeah. I don't want to be the boss of my horse. Sure, I want to be the leader. But I want to be the leader in the partnership. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, for sure. I think that's with any, you know, any animal that we, we, we have charge of, right? You know, any, any pet that we have. It's not to be the be the boss of that animal, but it's to have a partnership with that animal. It's to have a, a relationship with that animal to where there's a, 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 a and it's not mutual, mutual, mutually exclusive that, you know, I'm going to tell you or, 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 you know, whatever, in whatever way to make the animal do something. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to learn the nuances of the animal so that okay, when you're doing something, I understand what you're doing. And that's going to be the result that, you know, right. I'm, I'm going to bring forward. And that is key <clears throat> to our pet sessions. Uh, and what I try to communicate to the humans that bring behavioral issues, for example, to us with their animal. It's like, I'm not here to make your animal behave or tell your animal or threaten your animal or make your animal feel bad about misbehaving because they'll come in and you can see they already know why their human wants to talk to them. They understand they've been urinating or they're doing something and they usually feel kind of guilty about it or they have a reason. And once you understand that reason, the compassion is off the charts. I mean, you think that you have a relationship now with your animal, but oh, the d- dynamic changes. Instantly. Right. Yeah. And so it doesn't even at the end of the session matter if they stop doing the behavior because you understand them better. And because you understand, and that's an energetic mm-hmm. perspective, uh, usually the behavior does improve. Right. So you, when you see it from the animal's eyes, um, it's just amazing. And it's not for us to force them to behave one way or the other, especially when you realize that this these past lives influence them so half the time very often it's not even their fault it's some energy that's coming in from a past life and we can work on that so yeah yeah so many other horse collective questions are coming up to me now i mean you know one that of course there is but i mean you know we're actually oh gosh you know we are recording this two days after that really mysterious very strangely some say symbolic thing happened in london do you happen to I know saw i that? saw that yes yes so yeah, that was weird. this is i mean there are all kinds of theories about what's going on here and as a horse person my little spidey senses are going way off these horses are so trained to be in mobs and riots and mm-hmm. all kinds of things. And for them to say this rider, that rider, a group of riders being who've been trained and the horse has been trained to be around chaos like that, that uh, that more than one rider got got bucked off, that, that they, 
I don't know. Like, you know, I'm like, okay, wait a second here. There's something right. a little fishy going on. I've never even heard of one really, let alone more than one, let alone. And here's the, here's a couple of the big ones. As a horse photographer, a former professional horse photographer, some of the images, like the particularly the one I know you're thinking about, the one you saw, the one they've all saw, the one that's right there. To get a horse in that um, pose, kind of yes, in that pose, <clears throat> with that exact moment within that uh, gallop, it takes years. It takes years for a photographer. Or you have to have a, a, a particularly great talent and already have understand the timing and understand horses um, and, and the knowledge of their gates, you know, and, and, and to get that. It's it's iconic is, I guess, what I'm saying. They yeah, got yeah. The, and, and so that, yes, so that, that somebody's like, well, here's a photo that somebody like accidentally took, even if it was a professional, <laughs> because even a professional photographer if you're not used to the gates of a horse and understand the positioning and when you should be snapping for it to be like, oh, it just happened to be that. <laughs> it just happened to be that one tenth of a second where I right. got, I don't know, you know, like, I just don't know about that. And then, I mean, there's all, I mean, you know, you can hire this. Who knew we were going to go down, or I was, a conspiracy uh, road with our pet channeling. But, you know, you can hire um, pets to be actors just like you can um, humans. Yeah. Just say it. Wow. There are horses, there are dogs. And you know the yeah. dogs, right? The dogs in the movies that are trained to, to oh, do yeah. whatever. And, you know, half those dogs, have you ever noticed, like, like the the person, the actor's like talking to their dog and, and the dog is supposed to be like looking at the human and having yeah. a conversation. Yeah. But if you know dogs, you know, they're not looking at that person. No, they're, they're looking just slightly the off. Handler, right? Yeah. They're yeah. like, when do I get my treat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. you know, what yeah. you're telling me to do? Yeah. I mean, anybody who really, really knows a dog oh, yeah. knows when. You can see it. You yeah, can see it. You can see yeah. it. So, I mean, I know there's video out there. I haven't really looked at any video i just saw that one picture <clears throat> but you know who knows what these trained animals if they were in fact trained in that way were right. asked to do i don't know the whole thing seems seems a little uh, a little oh, off to me not fishy. that i'm go ahead yeah, a little, yeah a, a, a little fishy but well, what it is kind of, of coincidental that we're talking we've done a right? lot of things a lot like of these two days episodes. ago right this is yeah. two days ago yeah. Yeah. But we've been doing episodes with horses quite a lot for this yeah. series. Yes. We are going to move into some other animals, of course, yes, because we, we had a lot uh, we wanted to accomplish early on. And the horse yeah. energy was so prominent right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we have an exciting show next, probably, um, yeah. or in the next couple of episodes or something about things that are happening with dogs and cats yeah. and other animals uh that are helping mother earth and it, it's an exciting time right now that's great that's great but i really oh my god if i mean it, now i'm going to dream about questions i want to ask the horse collective so <laughs> I, hope we, I hope we can do a horse collective communication part two um i mean even so much like the lands disappearing you know that kind of thing but um you know thanks guys this was fantastic i probably have wanted to listen to the collective of horses for oh i don't know more than 60 years and that's that's wow. not exaggerating and not a joke wow. i mean i was a, a toddler in a stroller being pushed alongside um a street in okinawa i mean i was probably something like 16 months old or such um maybe even younger and the very first horse that i have a memory of and my understanding from thinking about it so much, it's the first one I ever saw, really, in real life, was a um, very small, very uh, humble, uh, white or gray horse pulling a cart for uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, wares, you know, mm. somebody selling pots or rags or whatever it was. And this, you know, we're talking 1962 in yeah. on an island in Japan. Um, so I have no idea, but I just remember 
abs and my whole heart, my whole being, I, I was like fixated on that, on that, and she, it, that, that animal was the most beautiful thing I had ever even imagined. Of course, I'm less than two, but I'm, I'm still, I, I have that memory here in my head still. Yeah. And that I, was your DNA trigger. It's exactly. For this life. Exactly. Yeah. See, that, that's why I asked that question. It was yeah. like, I mean, that's the moment it started. It's like everything became horses after that. And it still hasn't stopped my entire life. And, <laughs> and, you know, some people, horses are kind of like phases. And then there's those people like me. It's where, a life. Well, you know, I, I say this a lot, maybe I say this a lot, but uh, I think it's really true. There was a, a few times in my life where I was not able to be on, live, have a horse or be around them. And um, yes, I knew I missed them, even at, like as a young mother. But what I didn't really, really realize was I wasn't healthy without them. Mm. There's there's an aspect of my own health, not just mental, <clears throat> but also physical, just all kinds of encompassing health that yeah. uh, I just... I, Thank yeah, you. It's like it's fantastic. Almost like withdrawal symptoms. It, it, oh, it affects you physically, not just mentally. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The absolute grief just to not, not be around them. And, and it, it, you know, a couple of the groups that I pay attention to on uh, like a Facebook group, um, you know, it's an old, older women group. And, and some of those people that's giving me goosebumps right now. Some of the, some of those women, they hang out there because they can't do horses anymore. You know, they may be in their eighties or nineties or whatever, or something may have happened to their health or their uh, living situation or whatever. And they go there to commiserate and to remember and to, uh, you know, cheer on the successes and the stories and hugs, hug the people who are having things happen with their own horses. And it's, it's such a, um, it's such a fantastic group because very often the women are like, well, I'm, I, you know, I must be too, I may be too old. Am I too old right now? And, you know, of course the standard answer is, well, how physically fit are you? Some people, you know, do this into their nineties, you know, they yeah. can, but some people, of course, they like my dad upstairs, you know, 93, he, he can, he can pet my horse if he's holding on to his walker, hold, you know, strong enough. That's, that's the extent of my dad and horses or somebody in that physical condition. But um, yeah. anyway, um, thank you again for this. It was fantastic. Thank that you. It was a blessing. It's always I can't good to connect. wait to do it next time. Okay, everyone. So um, before we sign off, just know that you can find all the links to Will and Allison um, underneath in the description below. And you can always find them on quantumhealers.com or palmandlotus.com. Yep. Right? Yes. Thanks. Everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.